Uh, thanks, Nuna. Um, and happy International Women's Day, everybody. Um, and thank you for inviting me to speak about workplace culture. It's been great to see in the chat all the, the great insights from a lot of the uh, uh, young people. And so I would recommend uh, to Brian to maybe form an advisory group with all this uh, massive amount of insight. And I'm sure you're going to move ahead fast. Um, but let me get on to my uh, presentation. Let's see whether this works. It doesn't. Okay, I can't uh, seem to. Can you take control, Leah? Or yeah, thanks. Um, so my background, I'm I'm a, I'm an astrophysicist. I'm definitely not a, uh, a sociologist. So I'm uh, a practitioner, a doer. I like to solve difficult problems, uh, mostly in cosmology, where I've been leading a, a center of excellence, in which I always uh, try to like do my job, do the science and do it in a great way, uh, recruit fantastic people. And I see diversity in my team, equity and inclusion as a vehicle for excellence. Um, here uh, in, in this presentation, I really don't wanna, I feel a bit uncomfortable because I don't wanna preach or judge or brag or whatever I, I've done. Uh, but I, I'm here to share the insights uh, that I've gathered and uh, it's sort of, you know, you can take it or leave it, but this is my experience. Um, and Leah, can you, or I don't know, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so uh, just to let you know where I come from, uh, I have a, a bunch of sort of basic guidelines in what I do. And, and this is probably the, the, the main one. This is Brian Schmidt, a Nobel Prize winner in cosmology, uh, who, who basically uh, uh, reminded us that, that the point of, of, of trying to fix the leaky pipeline. There's only one solution, and that is to actually hire women. And you know, if you have an action plan that does not uh, put this center stage and ensures that you will be hiring women at a certain pace in the, in the future, then don't be surprised if it doesn't work. Uh, next slide. Um, I have done a bit of uh, 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 studies myself. This is this is one of them, and and it sort of has shaped my my view of the situation. What you see here is a precursor ERC grant uh, scheme, uh, and you show I, I show the fraction of of, of uh, men and women at different stages of the scheme. Initially, the the recruiting pool, and you'll see of order point, you'll see of order thirty percent women. And then uh, the initial applicants uh, dropped a bit. Then uh, the, um, the, the applications were then selected for further uh, uh, progress to the, to the international level uh, or the European level. And at the European level, some applicants were selected for interviews. And then finally, there was selection. And at each stage of this process, there are four steps. There's an attrition of women. And, uh, but if you, if you compare each step, this is not significant. And so at each step, there's a non-significant change. But if you add up the four steps, you'll see a, 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 a big uh, a, a difference between the initial and the final uh, fractions of women. And I believe that this is uh, a major aspect of the leaky pipeline that people uh, encounter, um, say, uh, slightly biased but non-significant uh, selection biases. And in, we know in, in academia that we always get evaluated, we always get selected, and over time this can add up to a significant effect. I just want to remind you here that uh, here there was no uh, women getting pregnant, no, no one uh, deciding to drop out, uh, doing something else. This was just over uh, half a year and so, and you know, the selection was um, uh, based on, on, on what other people did based on the same file. Okay, next slide. Uh, which leads me to, 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 to this important aspect that if there are biases or unfairness in the, in the system, uh, we really shouldn't talk so much about equality, but rather equity 
you know, to allow people to compete on, on, on a fair, uh, fair scale, uh, taking into account uh, any, any uh, differences in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, you know, capabilities or uh, situations, right? So, you know, you see here that, you know, equality uh, doesn't really uh, allow the small guy to, to watch the football game. Oh, the baseball game. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Uh, now, my approach is that this really isn't rocket science. Uh, I move on. Although, if it was, uh, you know, it's no big deal because you know I work with rocket scientists, and uh, in in this business, if you want to launch a rocket or fly to the moon, you definitely hope is or wishful thinking is not a strategy. Uh, how do you move ahead? Uh, next slide. Well, I, you know, I always feel that you just treat it like, like a project. You set a goal, you make it a priority to reach it, even if it's difficult. Of course, you inform yourself about what's known in the field. Uh, make sure you know what you're doing. You create a strong and dedicated team. And, and uh, very importantly, you make yourself accountable. If you don't fly to the moon, maybe somebody else should take over. Uh, and then, of course, on the on the way, it, you know, it's going to be a long and, uh, and bumpy road. Uh, be ready for change and surprises. Next slide. Now, uh, this brings me on to the to the workplace, which is the subject of my my presentation. Um, you cannot be an alien at work. If you want to perform at work, you need to feel that you belong there. Uh, and there are various uh, studies that show that, for example, if you are less than 15% of, of a given population, then you do not perform as well as, as you should. And if you move on, um, other studies show that uh, you don't really gain the most out of, of in, in this case, women, uh, if you are not uh, at the 35% level. What I wanna say with this, is basically that you cannot just try and say, okay, let's create a welcoming workplace uh, uh, culture, uh, a nice place, you know, and then hope all the women will, 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 will join. Because if they still feel like they're aliens, and this goes for any kind of minority as well, uh, it, it, it's not gonna work. And therefore we need to turn this kind of, kind of negative or downward spiral where people don't apply if they don't see, see that they belong into the opposite and so that's the next slide which is try to trying to do a, like a, a, a positive feedback loop which you know should fix the leaky pipeline and also as i mentioned that we have a broken meritocracy and so uh, we need to make sure that people get uh, uh, evaluated in a fair way um, and so you, you need to create excellent science and then uh, hire, uh, you know, uh, make sure that you, you can renew your team and then hire uh, in a balanced way. And I can speak uh, at length about how to hire and how to promote and how to recruit. Uh, what I'm going to talk about here is, is the, 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 another aspect, which is the, the work environment. Uh, and so I'm going to focus on that uh, in the rest of the talk. And so this is what we've, you know, these are aspects of what we've done at, uh, at DAC. And, you know, th this is, I'm sure out there, there are tons of, of good practice. And, and I, don't, I don't claim that this is the right way of doing it. I'm just sharing what we have tried to, do, uh, tried to do. And I think most of all, it is about explicitly, you know, openly and, and concretely care about your employees and their well-being and their progress. Um, and that requires some awareness of what's going on and the biases and, the, you know, as somebody showed the, 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 the fact that in, in the workplace assessments, women don't feel as, as well as men in the workplace. And you need to be aware of that and try and fix it. Um, it requires actually daily focus. It's not something you do in a conference and then and hope things will be fine. And probably also requires some courage and decisiveness in what you do. Something we've done uh, is to, to create a mental health initiative uh, to address mental disease, stress, well-being, coping, sharing, imposter syndrome. Um, that will uh, 
you know, help some, but I think it also just sends a signal that we care about people. Um, what we also are doing is that we are mentoring, we, are, we have a mentor scheme that allows for mentoring at all levels from professors to associate professors to assistant professors, postdocs, PhD students and master's students. Uh, it, it, there's a, a mentoring aspect, but there's also just the, the fact that people get to know each other and uh, can relate to each other. We created a uh, code of harmony. It's a sort of a code of conduct, but really it's about harmony. Um, we have formulated and articulated workplace values. Uh, of course, in a workplace, you need to figure out what are your values and there are no, there's no uh, one size fits all. Uh, I think it's also important to, to try and limit hierarchical boundaries. And, you know, just because I'm a professor, I don't need the biggest office or the biggest desk, I'd sit alone. And, and so on. Um, we we do a lot. One minute we, left, Jens. Thanks. We we try to uh, um, uh, have an inclusive and transparent uh, internal communication uh, and a great physical uh, working environment. Uh, I need to fast forward. I uh, we want to encourage and explicitly support our people and their initiatives. And uh, part of this is, as, as Eva also mentioned, you know, the recruitment process is a team building process. Uh, and uh, if we move forward, uh, the results of such, uh, such initiative can be that you, you, you create a helpful and caring environment, you eliminate all the microaggression and stupid jokes, you empower a younger generation, and you gain competitiveness in recruitment, funding, uh, evaluations, citation rates, and so on. Next slide. Uh, since we started, we actually now have uh, th three female professors. Uh, move on. I just wanted to mention you as well in Aarhus. Move on. Uh, yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fast forward. We, we have another program at University of Copenhagen, which is about career, career development for, for, for fairly senior people. We call them young scientists, uh, uh, postdocs and professors. I, I, it's something I'm doing with Marie-Louise Nosh. Uh, and the challenge really is to how to perform better, do more original research, and at the same time, escape the hamster wheel and try and cope better with the challenges uh, find balance and create sustainable careers. So basically it's working smarter and not harder, uh, but at the same time be extremely competitive. Um, the, one of the aspects that we are increasingly looking at is how we can uh, share uh, and uh, be vulnerable in, in what we do and that uh, in, as a way to, to beat the burnout and toxicity in, in workplaces. Uh, the hope of course is that with this program, the, the participants will go out in their local environments and increase uh, the, uh, and improve the, the local uh, workplace environment. Next slide. So there's this uh, uh, booklet. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at the messages uh, on a sustainable career at the University of Copenhagen. Next slide. Okay, so I'm done. Uh, so I hope I've inspired you uh, to on, on diversity, equity, and inclusion to try and do it yourself in your environment uh, and feel free to connect. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Jens. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, uh, there's a question for you in the chat, um, Jens. Uh, it says, uh, what an excellent talk. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to know in the many years Dark has been pioneering gender equality, how do their numbers look uh, like with respect to productivity. How did the inclusion of more females affected, for example, publication rate or external funding uh, acquisition? You, you know, I mean, you know, that's an experiment we can't do. Uh, so uh, I don't know, but uh, we've got great evaluations. We're doing fine. Uh, and as I mentioned, the citation rates of the female we have, uh, we have hired at, at the level of the males we have hired. And so that's indicative that we are not uh, we are not uh, compromising on quality. And that's another question for you, Jens, um, saying what kind of resistance, if any, did you encounter? Uh, lots, and uh, that's actually, uh, I'm gonna attend the, uh, the, the, the NET uh, breakout session where I'm gonna uh, talk about resistance. 
I think resistance is, is there and uh, uh, there's a lot of it. And I think a lot of it is, has to do with the old boys club uh, uh, aspects. I, much of it can be addressed. I think one of the things that are very, it's very difficult to address is just has to do with human personality or person, uh, personal traits in that some people just don't like change. And uh, we, we, I think we need to accept that. Some people love change and, uh, and some people just actually are, are fine the way it is. And so I think that's actually a, a very sort of a mundane reason for, for why there may be resistance in some cases. Mm -hmm. And Jens, you also mentioned, or you, you showed the, the, the well-known slide, uh, the difference between equality and equity. Uh, does that mean that you know, women should be treated differently? And, and, uh, and uh, in that case, uh, how? I think everybody should be treated uh, as they are. You know, I think uh, anyone needs support. In fact, anyone in university, anyone who ever became a professor had help along the way. And uh, so I, I'm a strong advocate that we are not looking for innate talent to just, you know, throw them out there and see whether they float, but rather that we try and develop the talent and uh, look at, you know, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses? And no, I don't think that women need special treatment. I don't think men need special treatment. But I think uh, we can all benefit from, from uh, it developing uh, the people that we are investing in. Mm -hmm. And there's another dilemma, Jens, uh, I think, because, but, because, I mean, universities and research areas are competitive environments. There's a competition for publications, for citations, for, uh, for, for jobs, not least. Um, and that doesn't necessarily create a very communal atmosphere. Do you think that dilemma is, is solvable? Uh, be, because everybody would like, you know, um, a nice communal atmosphere at their workplace. I, I don't think that is, is a much, I mean, unless, unless uh, you know, you have a workplace where you, you, you have favorites and you, you move them on to, to the next stage, I, you know, everybody is in competition with the rest of the world. And so, you know, you might as well uh, support each other in the, in the local environment. Of course, there are places where, you know, there's this guy down the, down the corridor who is the next in line for a job. And so, yeah, I mean, if this is the situation, then you know, that's not a great work, working environment. Uh, people, people thrive if they feel that decisions are made based on, on fairness and on well-defined criteria that are open. Like, you know, we don't like moving goalposts. We, you know, it's, if we define what are the criteria, then people are fine not getting a job if really who got the job was a better candidate. But but if uh, yes, we should move back to the to the slide you used. You know, the kid having a, a, a larger box standing on. So so I'm just trying to 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 figure out. You know, um, where can we sort of uh, change our uh, our standards when we recruit people or or when we have a. a or develop a workplace culture uh, when it comes to women be because we, we have to move a bit closer to to what you're actually doing uh, and how we can change some okay. of the levers here yeah yeah i think eva was very clear on that you know uh, if uh, if your search committee comes that comes up with a, a, a 20 men on the on the on the short list then uh, you know send it back and see whether there's talent out there that can also come in play that's one way mm -hmm. um the but would you would you be willing to for instance i mean we discussed earlier whether a, a research stay abroad after postdoc is pivotal for 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 development of your career i mean could, could you get a position as a a um, associate professor even though you haven't been been abroad i mean clearly it's an issue to many women but they can be excellent uh, yeah. researchers anyhow yeah, yeah I, I think you know i mean the whole issue of careers of young people and uh, the, the career track at universities is a, is a big issue, issue on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of men burning out, lots of women uh, being um, uh, not treated uh, as, as fairly as they should. This is a big problem in itself. But yes, of course, you know, it's all about can, can, a, can a given person contribute to the science quality, to the workplace, uh, in, in an excellent way, then they're qualified, whether or not they have 150, 130 publications, whether they have kids or not, 
and so on, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I personally, I feel that people with kids, uh, uh, I, I, I certainly not worse scientists. Mm 